Good morning and Merry Christmas, and I'm wishing everyone, hoping everyone has a Happy New Year. Here is the Gospel and the Sermon for December 27th, the first day of, the first Sunday of Christmas. But first, let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature, and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And a sword will pierce your own soul too. There is also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of eighty-four. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon them. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. And once again, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I hope uh, the year 2021 uh, starts a little better than the finish of 2020. Waiting. We all do it. We spend half of our life waiting we have waiting rooms and waiting lines. We wait to be seated and we wait on the phone to speak to someone live instead of some automated machine, which then you have to find the keypad and punch in those numbers and then uh, it still takes a long time. Or maybe this has happened to you. You're at Walmart, you have your big old shopping cart full at Walmart and you're gonna get in line. But you find the shortest line, only to find out that it is the slowest line because of some machine glitch or the person in front of you is taking a long time. And there's a reason why it's the shortest line. Sometimes it seems that all we do is wait. Our life is one mad rush to get from one wait to another. On the average, it's been said that we spend six months sitting at spotlights, or let's say stoplights, and over five years in line. Five years of my life waiting in lines? I'm going to start carrying a book with me. You can get a lot of reading in five years. And we have all heard the different sayings. Good things come to those who wait, and some things are worth waiting for. Now, if good things come to those who wait, is there anything you would be willing to wait 
your entire life for? It would have to be something really good though, right? Suppose someone offered you $10 million if you just wait for it your entire life. Would you be willing to wait your entire life for $10 million? But maybe you're thinking, you bet I would. But what good is $10 million going to be to you if you only get it about a minute before you die? It doesn't do much for you. I guess it could be your kid's inheritance, but that'd be a, a different story. But in all, I don't think I would wait my entire life for $10 million. My time is more valuable than that. Like waiting in line for five years, amen? But there are things that I am uh, waiting my entire life for. And I'm not alone in this waiting line. Many of you are probably waiting for the same thing. But before we talk about what that is, I want us to look at Simeon, who waited his entire life for something. And I think it's definitely worth waiting for. If I was given the offer to wait my entire life for the same thing he waited for, I think I would gladly do it. So in verse 25 of this morning's gospel, we are introduced to this man, Simeon. Now the man, the name Simeon means God has heard. And I guess we'll see it today that God did hear Simeon's prayers and the prayers of many others. I guess you could say these things about Simeon. You could say that he had certain physical traits. First, he was living in Jerusalem, which was the political and religious center of Israel at the time. You could say that Simeon was where all the action took place. And in a moment, Simeon will receive the greatest answer to a prayer ever seen. I guess people would call Simeon eccentric if you look at today's standards. And this may be, become apparent as we learn later on. To some, he may even been called crazy Simeon or even nuts. Maybe even to a point where people stopped wanting to be around him. Those were his physical characteristics. But Simeon had certain spiritual characteristics as well. Simeon was a righteous and devout man. And I'm sure he so loved going to the Lord's temple. Simeon was righteous. And that shows his obedience to the word toward other people. He was devout. And devout expresses his obedience to the word toward God, just like those who are listening this morning. Simeon knew what the Bible said, and he did it. Such obedience is a prerequisite for being used greatly by God. When not in the temple, I'm sure he could be seen at home praying early in the morning or late at night. Simeon was probably one of the most prayerful men ever around back in Jesus' days. It was the hope and prayer of every Jew that the Messiah would come and bring peace and comfort to the people of Israel. And Simeon was no different than the other Jews. Simeon was waiting for the consolation of Israel. In other words, he was waiting for the comfort and peace. And this consolation of Israel was another name given for Jesus Christ, the Messiah. In the book of Isaiah, it is mentioned that the Messiah would come, and so Simeon was patiently waiting for him. And that's what God calls us to do, to wait. That is the part of every Christian's maturing process. Now, sometimes, though, does it seem that God has gifted us to do something but it doesn't seem like anything is happening. It is God that is teaching us patience. And what happens if you do not wait? That is when you step out and do what you want. Or even what you think God may want you to do. But if you don't wait for your timing, you could fall flat on your face. And that is one thing 
that I am trying to do. That is one thing that I'm working on. But what do we do in these times? In the meantime, what do we do? The Bible says to enjoy them. Learn as much about the Bible as you can. Become as much like Jesus Christ as you can. We must wait. And as we wait, remember that God has not forgotten you. The Bible says that he will renew you with strength. Now, there's a great hymn out there that I love to sing, and that's called Eagle's Wings. I'm not going to sing it because I can't sing, but the lyrics goes like, He will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun. And that's what Simeon did. God wanted him to wait for Jesus, and he did. Patiently waiting is a wonderful spiritual characteristic to have. Many of us have a hard time abiding by this, me included. We want to be like that mushroom that matures in a few days. I'll go out in a spring morning. I'll go outside, and uh, the next morning, what do I see? I see this mushroom. How does it appear? It appears overnight. But we want to be like that mushroom rather than the oak tree that take hundreds of years. Another spiritual characteristic of Simeon was that the Holy Spirit was upon him. Now, this is significant because at this time in God's history, not all believers had the Holy Spirit upon them. Prior to Pentecost, not all believers had the Holy Spirit. He came only on a few and sometimes only for a short while. But it's different today. We know that the Holy Spirit dwells within all believers. However, Simeon was one of those privileged saints prior to Pentecost who had the Holy Spirit. This means that Simeon was specially chosen by God to do something specific for God. Simeon was devout. He was righteous and had the Holy Spirit rested on him. Now, that's one special man. And in verse 26, we learn what his task is. Verse 26 tells us that it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Talk about one special promise of God to Simeon. What would you have thought about Simeon if you were around back in those days? Would you have thought that he was eccentric or some kind of crazy man? Or would you like to be the one that would have hung with him all this time, never leaving his side? Would you have loved to be by his side when he first saw the Christ child? But what is the point of this, though? Why was it important for Simeon to spend his whole life waiting just to see the Messiah? Deuteronomy 19 tells us that two or three witnesses must be present to validate an event. In this gospel, we already have Mary, the mother of Jesus, and we have Joseph, but we have two others. We have Simeon, and we have one other in which we will briefly touch on, and that is Anna. Anna is the person we know the least. Anna was dedicated to God. She was a faithful prophet who never left the temple after her husband had died. Day after day, year after year, she worshiped and trusted and praised God. On the day that Jesus was brought to the temple, she praised God and spoke about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. But Simeon is the one we focus on the most. Simeon needs to do this witnessing. The wait is over, and God has called upon Simeon to speak. And although he has been on the sidelines, he steps forward to be a witness. Simeon takes the child in his arms and says, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen yours, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light to revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people in Israel. We must remember some important lessons to this morning's gospel. First, God is in control because the Holy Spirit, Simeon, promised Simeon that he would not die prior to seeing the Messiah. Second, Jesus brings joy. Imagine the joy that Simeon felt when he first saw Jesus. Imagine the joy that a little child has 
when he or she wakes up on Christmas morning, goes downstairs, and sees all his presents. Third, Simeon had the great opportunity to announce for the Messiah was according to the word of the Lord. If God's word had not said it, he most unlikely, or you most likely, cannot trust it. Fourth, following Jesus will not always be easy. Simeon told Mary that and Joseph that this child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that he will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. And of course, later we will learn that many will oppose him. And as a result, a sword will in fact pierce Mary's own soul too. Later, of course, later, of course Jesus tells us, take up your cross and follow me. Friends, it's been a couple of days since we celebrated Christmas. The gifts are all opened. Parties have come and gone. The credit card bills will come in a few weeks. It would be easy to simply settle down and say, whew, that's over. But should we? Jesus still changes lives today, just like he changes Mary and Joseph. They have no idea what's going to happen over the next few decades as Jesus grows. But their lives were forever changed because they were faithful. Then there is Simeon. Some people get wrapped up in the past that they forget about their future. But not Simeon. He still looked ahead and found hope and life in Jesus. And maybe some of us could be like Anna. Life has not dealt you with your best hand. We know that Anna lived the majority of her life as a widow. She could have became bitter and blamed God, but she didn't. She worshiped God day after day after day. Her faithfulness and obedience were rewarded as she saw Jesus. Mary, Joseph, Simeon, and Anna were ordinary people who put their faith in Jesus and their lives were forever changed. And friends, what's important is that we do the same thing. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm hoping everyone has a great week. Everyone stays healthy. And again, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year.